Welcome to the 2023 State of the Port. It's truly an honor for me to deliver my second State of the Port address to so many of my peers and teammates. The room is filled with the best in class customers, industry partners, visionary state and elected leaders, strong supporters, and the most amazing port teammates and maritime community members in this country. We are among industry excellence today, and it serves as a great reminder of how much talent is connected to our port system. I want to begin today with a big thank you to the Propeller Club of Charleston for hosting. For more than 50 years, the Propeller Club has been bringing us together each year to celebrate our industry and share what we are doing to set ourselves up for continued success. Please join me in giving a big round of applause to the Propeller Club for the work that they do to support our maritime industry. Charleston's not the biggest city, and South Carolina's not the biggest state. And yet, we are one of only nine states in the country with a top 10 U.S. container port. You all be shocked at how long it took us to write that one sentence. <laughs> South Carolina provides reliable service, efficient operation, unmatched infrastructure, and an advantageous location in the thriving Southeast market. We've remained incredibly competitive as the nation's eighth largest container port in the country. This growth is thanks to our team, our customers, and all of you who support our port. Our incredible board of directors enables us to make bold swings in our operations, our infrastructure, and our people. They share their expertise and strategic thinking to benefit our business. I would especially like to thank Bill Stern, our board chairman. Bill has served on our board for more than two decades, supporting us in countless ways. We owe him so much of our success. Please help me in thanking our board for their service to our state. Thank you to Senator Larry Grooms and Representative Bill Sandifer for serving on our Review and Oversight Commission as Chair and Vice Chair, and to Governor Henry McMaster for the continued support for our state port system. It's amazing to have you all behind us. We are so fortunate to have a business-minded governor, General Assembly, and congressional delegation who advocate for a strong business community and climate here in South Carolina. Their support allows us to provide excellent port service to our state's businesses. Some of our biggest infrastructure projects, such as the Charleston Harbor Deepening Project and the Navy Base Intermodal Facility, are only going to be realized because of our state's bold investments in our port system. These strategic investments have generational impact on our entire state. When we build port capacity, we attract more business, more investments, and better jobs to our communities. I would like to ask all federal, state, and local elected officials to please stand as we thank you for the work that you do for South Carolina. I would also like to recognize two titans in our community who have made a great impact on our region, North Charleston Mayor Keith Summey and Trident Technical College President Mary Thornley. Thank you both for your years of service and work to create more opportunities for the people who live here. We are so grateful to all elected leaders, business leaders, economic developers, and community partners who enable our growth and our state's continued economic prosperity. We are proud to be a top 10 U.S. container port because of your support. Thank you to all of our customers. There are a lot of you here today 
the global brands and mega retailers, the advanced manufacturers and automakers, cold storage companies, resin producers, small business owners, and agricultural producers. We're so proud to serve you, and we appreciate your continued partnership. We are experts at quickly working ships for ocean carriers and moving cargo for the businesses who entrust us to expertly handle their goods. It's our job to make sure that we provide the service, speed, and connectivity that our customers depend on. Our impressive leadership team steers all of these operations. They oversee more than 1,000 teammates at SC Ports who are responsible for keeping freight moving for our customers and for South Carolina. It's the honor of a lifetime to work alongside them and the entire SC Ports team. Particularly today, I would like to congratulate Sadie Battle, who was named by our board this morning as the Vice President of Human Resources. Sadie, please stand. And of course, to our entire maritime community, our partners at the ILA, stevedores, harbor pilots, tug pilots, line handlers, motor carriers, rail partners, maintenance vendors, federal and state partners, and warehouse and distribution center workers. We thank you for being our partners every day on the docks and on our terminals. We couldn't do it without you. Now let's see our terminals in action. When I was the head of operations, my office was located on the Wando Welch Terminal. From there, you could hear the buzz and feel the energy of our operations. The hum of the terminal, all the activity. It's a steady drumbeat of business. For those of you that are in this business, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For anyone who has ever toured our facilities, you have gotten a taste of the energy on the terminals and within our harbor. A terminal is like a maritime ballet with many moving parts all working together seamlessly to move goods to their intended destinations. And it all begins with our harbor. For more than a decade, we worked on the Charleston Harbor Deepening Project alongside many project partners, including Governor Henry McMaster, the South Carolina Legislature, the Congressional Delegation led by Senator Graham, both the Obama and Trump administrations, environmental agencies, engineers, dredging companies, and the talented team at the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Charleston District. In 2012, our General Assembly showed their confidence in the project by setting aside $300 million. This was a monumental move by our state. It showed the federal government that we were invested in this project, and this decision set us on the path towards success. Charleston now has the deepest harbor on the U.S. East Coast at 52 feet. And at 52 feet, SC Ports can handle the biggest ships calling the East Coast. Vessels fully loaded with imports and exports can seamlessly transit through the harbor. The project also included widening and deepening the rivers and turning basins, which allow ships to turn with ease at any tide while other ships are occupying the berth. This allows for more fluid vessel movements and keeps vessels on schedule. Charleston Harbor can also accommodate two-way traffic for the biggest ships calling the port, keeping goods flowing in our supply chain. As a state, this all makes us more competitive, and we will continue to attract new investment and business to support our economy. Our deep harbor will bring many economic opportunities to South Carolina, making a true generational impact on our state. To the northeast sits Wando Welch Terminal, and I would like to take a minute to please let you all know, in case you don't, that Lila Moore Welch passed away this past weekend, the wife of Don Welch, who the terminal is named for. So please keep that family in your prayers. Wanda Welch is one of the busiest container terminals on the U.S. East Coast. 
Every day, thousands of SC Ports teammates and maritime workers enter the terminal to support our supply chain. The terminal has 65 rubber tire gantry cranes and efficiently moves containers around the yard. And thanks to an EPA grant, 12 of these 65 are now hybrids with batteries that significantly reduce emissions and fuel consumption. The terminal also boasts new ship-to-shore cranes. As ships grew, we had to grow along with them. Today, we have 15 state-of-the-art ship-to-shore cranes with 155-foot lift capability. These taller cranes also have greater outreach. Our operators work bigger ships without losing speed. And ocean carriers benefit from having five tall cranes per berth. We can quickly work three ships at one time, and it's truly amazing to see our crane operators in action. We also modernize the terminal overall, yielding a stronger wharf, more efficient layout, enhanced information systems, additional refrigerated cargo capacity, and a roundabout that enables truck traffic to move smoothly. We average close to 7,000 gate transactions a day, and we recently surpassed 850 gate moves in a single hour. Thank you to the Charleston Gate Company on this amazing feat. To further support importers and exporters, the terminal has 2.4 million TUs of cargo capacity, as well as an on-terminal retail transload facility. Wando Welch Terminal efficiently handles the cargo of today and has the capacity to handle growth in the future. Up the Cooper River, North Charleston Terminal provides great port service and additional cargo capacity for our customers. The team at North Charleston excels with high crane productivity and vessel productivity, recently achieving 45, I'll say it again, 45 crane moves per hour on an MSC vessel. We now have the opportunity to enhance a high-performing terminal with renewed capacity to handle future growth. By modernizing our existing operations, upgrading cargo handling equipment, and optimizing this terminal layout, North Charleston Terminal will once again handle 2.4 million TEUs of cargo, giving it the same cargo capacity as the Wando Welch Terminal. You may say, how is that going to happen? Well, the South Carolina Department of Transportation is playing a pivotal role in this vision with its expansion of 526. SCDOT plans to replace the Don Holt Bridge which will now allow the bigger container ships calling the Port of Charleston to access North Charleston Terminal. Thank you, Secretary Christy Hall, for your vision and support. We are excited to see this critical highway infrastructure project benefit the people who live here, as well as the businesses who depend on the port. When we see North Charleston, we see growth on the horizon. Situated nearby along the Cooper River, Leatherman Terminal's 169-foot-tall ship-to-shore cranes can be seen throughout the Charleston region, serving as a reminder to all of us of Charleston's continued success as a port city. As the only new container terminal in the U.S., Leatherman's terminal capacity and capabilities offer a major competitive advantage for South Carolina. This $1 billion phase one adds more than 700,000 TEUs of throughput capacity and a new berth to SC ports. At full build out, the three berth terminal will reach 2.4 million TEUs of cargo capacity. The terminal was built with sustainability in mind with five electric ship to shore cranes and 25 hybrid rubber tire gantry cranes designed to reduce emissions. The process to build Leatherman Terminal was an amazing engineering feat, requiring great teamwork and persistence over many years. This project has garnered significant recognition, including being named as one of the top engineering projects in the country from both the American Council of Engineering Companies and the American Society of Civil Engineers. We are proud to add a world-class port terminal to the U.S. East Coast port market. 
And while this may be the only terminal in history to have two grand openings, we are sincere in our hope that we can soon fully utilize this terminal to further support U.S. supply chains and benefit all those working in the maritime industry and at port-dependent businesses throughout our state. Looking down at Columbus Street Terminal from the Ravenel Bridge, you can see the massive pieces of machinery and thousands of South Carolina-made vehicles being exported for global automakers. The team at Columbus Street Terminal is responsible for moving huge pieces of brake bulk, forklifts, wind and gas turbines, tractors, machinery, steel coils, boats, and my favorite, brewing tanks. The terminal can support five brake bulk vessels at one time, and we're strategically positioned to handle heavy lift cargo of more than 300,000 pounds directly from on-dock service to rail. The terminal also handles thousands of vehicles each week, including vehicles for BMW Manufacturing Company, Mercedes-Benz vans, and Volvo cars. The vehicles are driven on and off trains, onto the terminal, and then onto ships for export to global markets. Columbus Street Terminal provides reliable service for automakers' production lines and supply chains, supporting thousands of jobs in the upstate, midlands, and low country. When looking at BMW alone, SC Ports exports more than 60% of South Carolina-made vehicles supporting the largest export vehicle operation by value in the United States. We are proud to keep freight moving for our automotive partners. Thank you, Sarah, for all you do. <laughs> Situated along Charleston Harbor, Union Pier currently houses home-ported and port-of-call cruise operations. In 2025, we will transition to only port-of-call cruises creating new business opportunities and freeing up nearly 70 acres of waterfront property in downtown Charleston for development. It has been a long shared desire to redevelop Union Pier and to transform this successful port operation into a neighborhood with public parks and waterfront access for Charlestonians to enjoy. Our hope is to seamlessly integrate this property into the city. We are working alongside the city of Charleston and the esteemed College of Charleston's Riley Center for Livable Communities to define the site's future. The Riley Center has formed a Union Pier Stakeholder Advisory Committee made up of a diverse group of local residents who represent community constituents and viewpoints. With guidance from this advisory committee, the Riley Center will lead the planning and engagement process to help define what Union Pier will become. This will happen in parallel to the city's planning processes and significant community engagement. The Riley Center is hiring a team of professional planners to oversee the creation of this plan based on our community's input. We look forward to seeing Sasaki's and their teammates' vision, hearing more from the community, and following the city's processes over the next year ahead of this property going on to the market. Together, we will reimagine this site and create a beautiful neighborhood with significant public assets for the people of Charleston. Our port system is truly for the entire state. Our first expansion out of Charleston came in 2013 with the launch of Inland Port Greer. The Inland Port extends the Port of Charleston's reach 212 miles inland, allowing imports and exports to quickly move from our marine terminals to the upstate with overnight train service from our partner, Norfolk Southern. Having a strategically located Inland Port helps attract cargo from inland markets. Customers benefit from the supply chain efficiencies and reduced emissions by moving more cargo by rail. This year, we are celebrating 10 years at Inland Port Greer 
and what a wildly successful decade it has been. The bustling logistics hub moves cargo from many advanced manufacturers, tire producers, shoe companies, mega retailers, and solar panel manufacturers. This growth demanded an expansion to accommodate more containers and trains to meet our customers' needs. More than 9,000 feet of new rail has been installed, including additional rail processing track and two rail storage tracks within the terminal. The container yard is currently being expanded by 18 acres to the east and west to handle 50% more cargo. We are also doubling the size of the existing chassis yard and building new facilities for our team. This expansion comes at the right time. Inland Port Greer had an all-time record month in August, handling nearly 17,000 rail moves. We invest in our infrastructure to support upstate companies, which leads to new jobs and opportunities in the region. We can't wait to see what Inland Port Greer does in the next 10 years. <laughs> Following on the success of launching Inland Port Greer, we saw an opportunity to expand the port's reach once again, but this time along the Interstate 95 corridor in the PD region. CSX serves Inland Port Dillon with a direct rail connection to the Port of Charleston, allowing us to extend the port's reach inland to better serve our customers. Inland Port Dillon handles goods for major retailers, agricultural producers, and paper and manufacturing exporters, among other companies throughout the Carolinas and beyond. Inland Port Dillon plays an important role in supporting our state's thriving agricultural sector by connecting soybean, cotton, and peanut farmers to international markets. The Inland Port enables local farmers to send their products to consumers who live around the world. When we envisioned the Inland Ports, this is exactly what we hoped for, creating new jobs around the state and providing better service to our customers. We celebrated five years of growth at Inland Port Dillon this year, and it's been amazing to see the job growth in the region, as well as the growth of our operations. Inland Port Dillon had a record fiscal year in 2023, handling nearly 40,000 rail moves, up 50% from the prior year. We're so excited for its continued success. Now let's talk about the state of the economy. Like most ports around the country, our volumes are down from the import boom of the pandemic. In fiscal year 2023, SC ports handled nearly 2.6 million TEUs, which is down about 10% from the year prior when we saw the huge increase in imports bought on, brought on by consumer spending. We need you all to start spending again. But looking at the national trends, Charleston continues to outperform the broader U.S. container trade. At the start of the fiscal year, U.S. loaded TEUs were down 9%, while Charleston was only down 7%. But when comparing the same time frame prior to the pandemic, the U.S. is down 3%, but Charleston is up 5%. The U.S. East Coast market continues to attract new cargo from the U.S. West Coast. We've seen this trend for years as companies seek predictability, reliability, and access to the Southeast. We have also seen the added benefit of more production shifting from Southeast Asia and India, which favors the U.S. East Coast port routings through the Suez Canal. SC Ports remains a powerful alternative gateway for cargo owners seeking a well-run port with capacity in the booming southeast. The industry expects a soft peak season. Volumes continue to reflect the tempered global economy and overstocking trends, but we are seeing signs of strength and optimism. Even as manufacturing and retail imports have declined across the U.S., the Southeast markets continues to thrive 
with an influx of new residents and industrial growth. The South Carolina Department of Commerce reported that companies invested more than $10 billion to establish or expand operations in South Carolina last year alone. Port-dependent companies are investing in new operations, and we anticipate this will drive SC Port's cargo growth at a higher rate than national trends. We are seeing cargo growth from advanced manufacturers, automotive companies, EV and battery manufacturers, solar panel producers, resin companies, e-commerce sellers, cold storage facilities, major retailers, and import distribution centers. We have a growth plan to expand with you. We've invested more than $2 billion in port infrastructure in recent years, and we have many more investments on the horizon. We have capacity for your supply chain, and we are committed to providing you world-class service. SC Ports is a powerhouse on the East Coast with a reputation for providing that reliable port service. We quickly work ships and efficiently move cargo for our customers. Our operations are supported by many logistics service providers represented in this room today. As an operating port, we are creative, aggressive, flexible, responsive, some would say scrappy even, when it comes to meeting our customers' needs. When more chassis were needed in the supply chain, we launched a port-owned and port-operated chassis pool, and we have since deployed 10,000 chassis into the Southeast market. We heard our exporters needing more predictability, so we rolled out fixed export receiving windows. We knew that retail importers and transload export operations needed near port dependent land, so we bought 1,000 acres in Ridgeville to support these operations. And we saw a need to develop the next generation of drivers. And we are thrilled to partner with Trident Tech to launch this professional new driver apprentice program. Beyond this, we are most proud of how we work collaboratively with our shippers to drive and deliver new solutions. Whether it's by providing efficient rail service via our inland ports, developing IT solutions to provide greater visibility, investing in capacity, or working with retailers on new cross dock or rail solutions, we are working to meet your supply chain objectives. We have a sales team that partners with our customers to deliver new solutions and approaches. The key to this, though, is having customers that will engage with our commercial team. We are passionate about listening to your challenges and solving for them. SC Ports wants to be much more than a service provider. We aim to be a solutions provider and your preferred port on the East Coast. We have seen the growth happening in the Southeast and we are actively investing in port capacity with the new Navy Base Intermodal Facility. Within the former Navy Base in North Charleston, you can see the Navy Base Intermodal Facility beginning to take shape. During the past two years, we have made significant progress on site design and site prep. Two years from now, this site will be efficiently run and a rail-served cargo yard. In partnership with Palmetto Railways and our two Class I rail carriers, CSX and Norfolk Southern, we will open the Navy Base Intermodal Facility by July of 2025. With, <laughs> within the facility, six rail-mounted gantry cranes will move containers on and off CSX and Norfolk Southern trains. A one-mile dedicated drayage road will be used to truck cargo to and from Leatherman Terminal, and a future barge will transport containers between the Leatherman Terminal and Wando Welch Terminals. These projects will enhance supply chain fluidity and reliability, helping to speed cargo between the Port of Charleston and inland destinations. 
Together, they lay the groundwork for future economic growth in South Carolina. These critical infrastructure projects are made possible by the $550 million in state funding. The South Carolina legislature and our governor, Henry McMaster, understands the key role our ports play in driving our state's economy. When our port grows, our state thrives. We are so grateful to our state support to ensure we have capacity and capabilities needed for our customers. Our state's investment will help these port-dependent businesses be successful and create jobs in communities around our state. Now let's hear from some teammates and partners who are making this long-planned project a reality. Twenty percent of our container volume moves by rail. That's 300,000 containers annually, one in five. So it's hugely impactful to us to have an intermodal network that performs efficiently and is able to grow. And this new Navy base intermodal facility will nearly triple our capacity. The facility includes about 78,000 linear feet of railroad track. Will be served by um, six rail mounted gantry cranes, which will be used to load and unload rail cars from trucks that are coming from the Leatherman terminal and or over the road. Uh, we'll have a dedicated road so that the cargo can stay off public roads. Norfolk Southern and CSX will both occupy the, the facility. They'll share um, the tracks coming and going, so we'll be able to serve all of our customers with either or. Palmetto Rail, which is a sub-department of the Department of Commerce in South Carolina, and will do a lot of the movements for us. It's a great new innovative terminal that they're going to be opening, and we'll be providing it with efficient and effective rail service so that we can connect Charleston to southeast markets and beyond. Norfolk Southern's excited about being a part of this initiative because it creates a more efficient, lower carbon solution, supporting both our customers and the community and the economy of the state of South Carolina, and delivering freight to our nation. Since October of last year, we've gotten underway the actual construction of the uh, rail yard. Our team is pushing forward to uh, complete the project on time, which is end of June, 2025. This is the next step. It's very exciting to be able to work on these mega projects. It's to actually see a shovel go on the ground over the past year, and just to see something eventually get the operation. That's a huge thing. I'm really looking forward to 2025, 2026. It's, a, it's gonna be a really big time. You know, South Carolina Ports Authority is positioned very well. We have an expanding port, a pathway to accommodate additional volume. This increased infrastructure will enhance the service to all of those industries that are using us today and those that are gonna locate here tomorrow. any port operation are the people making it happen. In today's fast-paced, interconnected world, it can be easy to forget that a lot has to happen for that Amazon package to swiftly arrive on your doorstep. It is easy to take it for granted when local retail stores and grocery stores are fully stocked. That's where we come in. We are the logistics experts. Everyone working at SC Ports and all our maritime and logistics partners play a key role in getting goods to the businesses and communities that need them. Our teammates keep freight moving throughout the supply chain. Their dedication to the job, the way they support one another, and creative solutions that they bring to our operations never cease to amaze me. I'm so proud to work with all of you and to serve alongside you every day. The best way to appreciate our team, though, is to see them in action.
And now on to an exciting announcement. Our maritime community knows that every container move represents economic opportunity. Ships in our harbor or trucks on our roadways represent jobs. Having a top 10 U.S. container port in South Carolina makes a big economic impact on our state, and we are so proud to play a role in that. We provide excellent port service so that businesses can receive goods and access global markets. We have always known that our port system is directly and indirectly tied to thousands of jobs throughout the state. We tasked Dr. Joseph Von Essen, a well-respected research economist and professor at the University of South Carolina Moore School of Business, to determine what exactly the port's economic impact truly is. He studied our impact in 2019 and again in 2023. And we are so excited to share with you today that since 2019, our economic impact has grown substantially. In 2019, SC Port supported one in 10 jobs in our state, which equated to about 225,000 jobs. Today, I'm very proud to announce that Port Operations support one in nine jobs in our state. This corresponds to 260,000 jobs in South Carolina that are supported by port operations. To make these numbers tangible, think about all the people you know working in the maritime and logistics industries alone. Those operating a crane, driving a truck, working on the waterfront, or running a distribution center. Now expand that thinking to all of the businesses in our state that depend on the port to do their work the advanced manufacturers and mega retailers, small and big businesses alike. We are a port for the entire state, and you can see that impact in every region. In the low country, beyond our port terminals, you see the port's impact rippling out with Walmart's nearly 3 million square foot distribution center in Ridgeville, along with automotive companies led by Mercedes-Benz vans and Volvo, and our expanding cold storage operations. In the Midlands, we support companies like Michelin, Samsung, and Continental Tire. In the PD, we move cargo for agricultural producers and retailers like Palmetto Grain, CNM Farms, Scular, the Andersons, QVC, International Paper, and Harbor Freight Tools. And in the upstate, we support BMW Manufacturing Company, Stanley Black & Decker, Ross Stores, First Solar, and Ingevity's new distribution center in Spartanburg, and soon, GE Appliances. These are just a few of the many customers we serve by efficiently moving importers and exporters' goods so they can run their businesses and reach their consumers. The study found that the port's impact corresponds to $17.6 billion in labor income for South Carolinians. The average labor income that are supported by the port, either directly or indirectly, is nearly $68,000. This is 23% higher than the average labor income among all jobs in South Carolina. That is impactful on people's daily lives. Port operations also support $1.5 billion in tax revenues annually for our state, which helps fund the needed services in our communities statewide. Overall, port operations generate nearly $87 billion in statewide economic impact each year. This is seen in the jobs that are connected directly to the port, and with those jobs, at port-dependent businesses throughout the state and beyond. This economic impact can be felt in our communities as people buy homes, spend at local stores, and build lives for their families. As we boldly move forward, we do so striving to make an even bigger impact on South Carolina. I always tell my team, celebrate the victories, and I can assure you, these new economic impact numbers are certainly a victory worth celebrating.
Congratulations to you all. I am so excited to see the growth here, and so many people played a role in getting us here. But we are not done. We always have our eye to the future. We must continue to invest in our infrastructure, capacity, and capabilities, and our people to remain globally competitive. In the year ahead, we will brace, embrace many opportunities to continue to build on the unshakable foundation we have created. We will also undoubtedly face many challenges by the time we meet again next year. And whatever they may be, we will positively embrace these situations together. Because this is South Carolina. This is Charleston. This is our maritime community. And this is our legacy. From our customers, to our maritime community, to our team, and all our state and business leaders, we are stronger together. And we will continue pushing forward and keeping freight moving for the benefit of all who call South Carolina home.